Is there honestly anything we can do to treat Alzheimer's disease? Well, a newly published clinical trial provides evidence that cognitive decline just might be able to be reversed. I'm Steve Goldring from simplehormones.com. I help patients and healthcare practitioners with easy to understand patient education resources. Most of those are about hormone optimization. Well, it might seem like Alzheimer's treatment is a pretty far cry from hormone optimization. But as I'll mention a little bit later, uh, when we go over the trial, hormones are a key element of some revolutionary Alzheimer's approaches. Over 400 clinical trials for Alzheimer's drugs have failed miserably. There are a tiny handful that were sort of successful, but the definition of success for most of these trials is pretty soft. Like a recent trial of the drug donanumab showing no cognitive improvement, and it didn't even stabilize dementia, but the progression of the disease may be slowed down a little bit by about a third. It wasn't very impressive at all, especially when you realize that about 45 million Americans are projected to die from Alzheimer's if we don't come up with something, an effective treatment of some sort. 45 million is a number that should take your breath away. It's about 13% of every man, woman, and child currently living in America right now. That's a lot of people. Dr. Dale Bredesen, a neurologist from UCLA and a team of Alzheimer's prevention colleagues, recently published a new clinical trial entitled Precision Medicine Approach to Alzheimer's Disease, a successful proof of concept trial. Bredesen worked on the trial with other integrative medical physicians, including a doctor named Anne Hathaway. I've spoken to Dr. Hathaway personally about her work with optimal hormones and Alzheimer's prevention. This trial involved 25 participants, so it was small, ages 50 to 76, with mild cognitive impairment, but not frank Alzheimer's disease. Here's what they call the objective of the trial as reported by the authors. To determine whether a precision medicine approach to Alzheimer's disease and mild cognitive impairment in which potential contributors to cognitive decline are identified and targeted therapeutically. Finding out whether that's effective enough in a proof of concept trial to warrant a larger randomized controlled clinical trial. Patients were evaluated for multiple cognitive risk factors that included markers of chronic whole body inflammation, insulin resistance and type two diabetes, deficiencies in a lot of different nutrients like vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, B vitamins, coenzyme Q10, minerals like maybe magnesium, uh, they looked at suboptimal hormone levels, estradiol and progesterone in women, testosterone in men, thyroid hormones in both men and women. They also looked at vitamin D, which is both a vitamin and a hormone. They looked at specific toxins in these patients, heavy metals like lead or mercury that build up over time, organic toxins like maybe pesticides, biotoxins like those that come from molds, infections that include herpes simplex, Borrelia, Babesia, or Bartonella, those come from ticks in the form of Lyme disease. There's Epstein-Barr, known to have an impact on cognitive risk. Uh, they looked at genetics for these patients, including their APOE status. That's a gene that's been mapped to Alzheimer's risk. Uh, one of the factors was head and brain trauma, essentially concussions. Vascular disease is important, sleep apnea and poor sleep patterns and gut bacteria imbalances were also carefully evaluated. The protocols were called precision medicine because they carefully looked at all these risk factors and they worked to rectify, to fix all those root problems underneath the cognitive decline. They weren't just giving supplements or hormones or reducing blood glucose. They were precisely sort of dialing in all the factors to maximize each individual person's ability to maintain and maybe even improve their cognitive function. Cognitive tests, including the, the biggest one, the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, also called MOCA, and CNS Vital Signs, those are, those are a couple of different tests. Those showed that about 84%, 21 out of 25, saw improved cognitive function. 12% of the participants got worse, and about 4% basically stayed the same. Researchers also reported on brain scans showing that brain shrinkage, which usually happens in cognitive impairment, was much less than they anticipated. The authors reported the results by saying, all outcome measures revealed improvement, 
statistically highly significant improvement in MOCA scores that I already mentioned. Also in CNS Vital Signs Index and the AQC, which are uh, cognitive ability function tests. Those were all documented. And importantly, no serious adverse events were recorded. Well, the big idea behind this small trial is to prove that a bigger, more comprehensive trial of the same treatment strategies would be kind of a worthwhile endeavor. The researchers believe they did prove that concept and that the results of this proof of concept trial support the performance of a larger, randomized, controlled clinical trial. The study report lists several sort of points of clarification. The first is that patients with a MOCA score of 18 or below, that's the line below which it's really called frank Alzheimer's disease, those people were excluded from the study. This has an impact on the study conclusions, meaning the results don't always apply to reversing Alzheimer's after it's become full-blown. The second thing they reported was a ceiling effect. Some of the patients started out with MOCA scores of 28 to 30 at the beginning of the study. They may have had lower scores on some other tests along with some cognitive complaints, but these patients didn't see a big improvement in their MOCA scores because they were measured as almost normal to begin the study with. If the group with fairly high MOCA scores had been excluded from the study in the first place, the overall improvement in MOCA scores would probably be a bit more dramatic for the study as a whole. COVID-19 may have affected the results of the study because patients were kind of stuck at home and isolated, and that can have negative effects on their cognitive abilities. There wasn't any comparison with the patients treated with this protocol against a drug or a placebo. It's nearly impossible to sort of blind or double blind a study that changes people's diets and their sleep and their hormones. Again, no adverse events were reported in the study, which is both a great result and sort of to be expected because just about everything in the study was designed to help them improve their health. I've got a link in the description below this video if you want to check out the whole clinical trial report. It's not all that long and it might be of interest to some of you, especially if you're a healthcare provider. If you are a healthcare practitioner and you're interested in helping your patients with prevention of Alzheimer's, click the link to visit my website and join my hormone provider database. I'll send you my latest videos on hormone optimization, including a bunch of those about Alzheimer's prevention and reversal, which is kind of a, a pet topic of mine. When you join my database, that makes it way easier for me to send you patient referrals. I get patients asking every single week about finding a doctor to help them with their hormones. Last time I checked, I have over 2,600 patients on my email list. Many of those patients are looking for a provider just like you. Speaking of patient referrals, I just spent some time on them yesterday. I told a woman in Ohio about a couple of great doctors that I know personally right near Dayton. I uh, emailed a woman in Florida about three docs that I could recommend within about 30 minutes from her home in Tampa. One of these docs I've spent several hours with. I'm still looking for hormone providers in central New York around Ithaca and Trumansburg, uh, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, in Pueblo, Colorado, Vancouver, British Columbia, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. If you're a patient and you're interested in finding a provider who might be able to help you prevent cognitive decline, click the link that says find a provider and I'll do my best to find somebody near you who knows about hormones and preventing long-term disease, including Alzheimer's disease. I can't guarantee that I know a provider in your town, but I'll give it my best shot. If you find this video helpful at all, click the thumbs up or like button and hit subscribe so you get notified whenever I post a new one. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to talking with you again soon.